Hi, and welcome to Scope Month. Today is Monday, March 13th, which means we are giving away another five 1000X series oscilloscopes. And on Friday, we're gonna give away a couple 4000X series oscilloscopes. Some of you in chat were at saying something a little bit earlier at the beginning that we're starting an hour earlier. It is daylight savings time here in the USA. So all of our times have shifted and you know, our, all our cell phone alarms went off this morning at an hour earlier. So here we are at 10 a.m. Mountain Standard Time, live streaming from Keysight Oscilloscopes headquarters in Colorado Springs. We are super excited to give away scopes today. If you have questions, we're gonna do some live QA at the end of the video like we did last week. And uh, we're also gonna be doing that for the next two Mondays. So we are, this is about halfway done with our live streams for scope month. Um, so make sure you tune in for the next one next Monday and the Monday after that. It'll be the same time now. There's no more time weirdness going on. Um, so we'll do live QA at the end of each of those. Um, so it looks like people are showing up. Good morning to everybody. Um, so remember today we're giving away 1000X, uh, these are 4000 X series scopes. We're giving away 1000 X series scopes. If you get your entry in by the time I do the drawing live, you will be eligible for today's drawing. You can enter once per 24 hour period at scopemonth.com and that entry will be valid for all of the future drawings. So if you enter once, you have a chance at winning all the scopes, but you can increase your chances by coming back each day and entering once per 24 hour period, starting at resetting at midnight mountain standard time. Um, also, if you wanna increase your chances of winning and you wanna increase everybody's chances of winning, you can check out the new Go Find Daniel contest that goes live today, last week. You guys found it really, really hurt, really, fast. Alex Norell found it on Twitter. He ran out to the Tech Museum in San Jose and posted a picture of the cutout with the hashtag GoFindDaniel. We have a brand new one this week. It might be a little less accessible than it was last week. And the clue for this week's GoFindDaniel contest is in the description below. Uh, what else do we have going on? The test to impress contest. So we have, uh, you know, we're getting entries for the test to impress contest. We have uh, I don't know, 10 to 20 of them right now. Uh, we'll be hopefully sharing some clips of those later in the week. And that contest is, if you don't wanna leave your scope up to chance, you can submit a video that has to be three minutes or less. If it's longer than three minutes, the video won't be eligible for the contest. Submit a video for that's three minutes or less, a link to YouTube, Yuku, or Vimeo, wherever you like to host your videos. Um, and that scope will be given away a fully loaded six gigahertz, 6,000 X series scope. That's worth something like thirty or forty thousand dollars to the grand prize winner, and there will be two runner-up winners of a MSLX 3104T, and a panel decision will be made to decide who wins those scopes. The panel will be myself, Electroboom, uh, Eve, Dave, Dave Jones from EEV Blog, and Chris Gamel from Contextual Electronics and the Amp Hour Podcast. Uh, so make sure if you think that you should get a scope and you don't want to leave it up to the drawing, make sure you enter the test to impress contest. Every day in scope month, we also do a scope tip. So today's scope tip is going to be on the 4000X. Someone asked in a previous uh, video they put in the comments below a tip they wanted me to cover. They talked about having multiple status lines and they wanted to trigger on whichever one of those status lines sent a rising edge. So there's a status line that says, hey, there's a, there's a failure here. It throws up a flag. And you can actually use it. What we're going to look at is an OR trigger to trigger on each of those status lines. And if any one of those go high, the scope will trigger. So let's take a look at the scope here. The first thing we see on the scope is that it's just free triggering right now. So I'm going to move my trigger level up just a little bit. Uh, and this threshold means any signal that crosses that threshold is going to trigger the scope. But even though there's no signal crossing that threshold, uh, we can see that the scope is triggering because we're in a mode that's called auto trigger mode. And basically the scope says, hey, I haven't seen anything, but I think you wanna see signal anyway, so I'm gonna go ahead and trigger after a certain period of time. And this isn't necessarily what we want when we're looking at status lines. So we can put that into a mode, a trigger mode. Instead of auto trigger mode, we can put it into normal trigger mode. And now that I'm in normal trigger mode, you can see that my acquisition has stopped because there's no valid triggers. And when I tap on the, with this probe, I just tap on something, I'm gonna start getting an edge and the scope is gonna trigger and it's gonna hold that signal until I get another trigger. Um, so you can use normal trigger mode, and we're gonna look at normal trigger mode a little bit tomorrow also, to, for uh, 
signals that are pretty infrequent, you're not getting a stable trigger um, under that normal trigger timeout mode, you can use normal trigger mode to get a stable waveform. Um, so, but if I trap trigger two, I'm not, act if I, my second probe, you can see this one's green, um, I have two probes here. If I tap the second one, I'm not seeing any signal because the scope is only triggering on channel one. So I need to go in and change my trigger. And instead of being on an edge trigger on channel one, I could go to channel two and go to a rising edge trigger and now I'd see channel two triggering. But what if I have multiple status lines and I want to trigger on you know, any one of them that happens to go high? So you can go and do an OR trigger. And what this is going to do is I'm going to say if channel one has either edge, this could be a rising edge, falling edge, depending on how you've probed it and set it up, and I can go to channel two, whoop, channel two there, and set this to either edge. And now if I tap either probe, the scope is going to trigger. And you can actually use this OR trigger mode on any of your channels. So you can do it on all four analog channels. You can do it on digital channels. Um, so you could, on this scope, theoretically monitor up to 20 different status lines. And if any of them are throwing a flag, then you would trigger on that. And you'd know, based on where you probed them, which one of your status lines is throwing an error. So um, the OR trigger is a really nifty tool if you have a bunch of different triggers and you're trying to monitor and see what's going on. Um, I also use them for debugging digital channels on my Raspberry Pi, which we'll look at tomorrow. Um, if I just want to do a, a status check and make sure that I have uh, my GPIO pins are toggling like I expect them to, that type of thing, I just hook up my MSO, put it in an OR trigger mode, set all edges. So if we go back to the scope real quick, sorry. Um, if we go to set all edges, you can then set each of the analog channel edges and all of the digital channels to that setting there. Um, so this is a super duper useful tool if you're debugging a bunch of different things or, or you know, you just, if you have an application that I didn't discuss, I want to see it in chat. Um, so the OR trigger is a pretty cool feature on the InfiniVision X series oscilloscopes. And I believe that's on the 2000 X series scopes and up. So it's not on the 1000 X, which is why I have the 4000 X series scope up today. Um, so what else do we have going on today? Um, actually, I also have a two minute guru video on the normal versus auto triggering mode. So you can go check that out um, after this live stream. So we have a scope tip. We've talked about scopemonth.com, find Daniel, test to impress contest. So you know what that means? It is time to draw a winner. So I'm going to walk over to my PC here and I am going to refresh my page. So if you get your entry in before right now, you will be eligible. Um, well, everyone, all your entries, you'll get your extra entry for the day. So let's approve all of those entries and we are going to draw five winners. And remember, if you find the Daniel cutout and post a picture to social media, we'll give away five extra scopes this week. So I'm going to go ahead and draw those winners and it'll take just a moment. Um, a couple of questions while those winners are polling. Uh, does it do an XY mode plot? So a listed you plot. Yes, you can. Um, I think if you look, if we can zoom back in on the scope here. If you look, there's actually a little X right here and a little Y on the scope right there. Those are for XY mode, so you can do that. Um, that's a good tip. We'll look at that as one of the scope month daily videos. Okay, so today's winners. Uh, we have five 1000 X winners. The first winner is Michael Javron, number two, Faustas Ivanauskas, number three, Jason D. Hazit, number four, Joel Backer, and number five, Leopold Andra. Congratulations to those 1000 X series winners. Um, as is tradition, we did this last week, the Australia winners are also Ryan Mounts and Sam Nesbitt. So if you're located in Australia, we have a special contest going for those. We will not be sending out email reminders for that contest. So make sure you check. If you're in Australia, check the Australia website, put a calendar in, uh, reminder for those dates and times. We'll be posting questions. You have to go in and answer them. So congratulations to our 1000 X series winners. While you're here, I'd encourage you to go check out some of the other videos on the Keyset Oscilloscopes YouTube channel. We have new content every week, every other week, depending on the season. Uh, we have a podcast, the Double E's Talk Tech podcast. Uh, we just talked about AI ethics and the time before that, we talked about the history of the Volt. If you remember, I had the little lemon battery out. I'd encourage you to check out those pod, or the podcast. We also have the Two Minute Guru video series. One of those is going live tomorrow. We're gonna talk about electrical current and some of the fundamental high level stuff on that. 
If there's any topics you want us to cover in either the podcast or the Two Minute Guru videos or in the Daily Scope Month Hits, you can put them in the description of this or any of the other, any of the other videos. I do check all of the comments for those videos. So let's go ahead and do some QA. Uh, let me pull up the chat window here. Can you use the scope as a spectrum analyzer? Yes. Um, you, there's an FFT mode. It doesn't have the digital down converter like a spec and would, but the FFTs, we even hardware accelerate it in the 3000T series scopes and the 6000X series scopes. Those are pretty cool. What do I have packed for lunch? I don't have a banana. I have some leftovers. Um, what else? We're giving away scopes every day. So Chris Crowley asks, how often are scopes given away? We're giving away every day. Um, no 4000X today because we only give away two of those on Fridays. Uh, let's see, any other questions? Um, the classic, why is my country not included? We answer that on the FAQs page in scopemonth.com. Uh, so go check that out. The Clark Kent look, I actually get the Superman thing a lot. Um, well, okay, what else are we doing? Um, can you, spec and can you still scope make good coffee? No, I'm sorry, I don't think so. Um, is there planned, a planned release for a four channel 1000X series scope? We have nothing officially announced or planned for that, but if you saw Dave Jones's video, you saw in the teardown that we have in our, our dye molds and injection molds for that, we've considered the possibility down the road, but we have no uh, concrete anything for that. How much is the 6000X series? It's, uh, it's, it goes up to six gigahertz. It starts at one gigahertz. So I think the starting price for a one gigahertz 6000X series scope is around 15 or $16,000, um, which is a pretty good price for a one gig scope. And if you're going up to six gig, it, it's, a, it's a screaming deal. Um, hmm, what else? Um, some of you from Germany, awesome. You may be, you, people in Germany may be useful for, the, for some upcoming things. Um, do the giveaway scopes include serial decode? No, they do not. They include um, all of the, it's a, it's a fully loaded, um, as far as bandwidth goes, it comes with a function generator, but serial decodes are not included on the 1000X series scopes. Um, what do I think about the hack that Dave Jones posted recently? That's a good question. Um, you know, he, he got right down to it. I was, I was impressed with his ability to hack the scope in nine days uh, and get the full, he's, I think he's turned on like 220 megahertz of bandwidth, which is not even something we have on the 1000X series scopes. Um, some of you have asked if, um, if I provided him any of that information. I've, I've not done anything to help Dave hack that scope. So that was 100% Dave. Uh, would I be able to use input signals into a CAN bus using the arbitrary waveform generator? Yes, you would. So I'll actually show that off. I'm going to do a demo on the fly here if we can zoom in on the scope. Um, so if you, if you look at the waveform generator, uh, we have a number of different waveforms. And one of the waveforms you have is an ARB. So I'm going to go grab a BNC cable super quick so I can connect up my wave gen. Um, and so we're triggering here still in that OR trigger mode. If I tap my screen to get a decent signal that I like and see if I can remember it on the fly how to store this to the ARB. Um, you can actually, let me see if it's an edit waveform here. Let me make my dialog solid. Um, right now in my ARB is just a uh, sine wave. If I go to create new, yeah, that's not what we want. Um, say that again. I'm gonna go back, to, I'm getting some guidance off screen. Thank you guys. Store source to ARB, I couldn't see that, it was on the other side of the screen. So now I, when you hit the store source to ARB, whatever analog waveform is on screen, I'm gonna go back to transparent dialogs. You can kind of see it in there. I'm selected channel one as my source. Um, I could store channel two, but that's, there's nothing on channel two right now. So by hitting store source to ARB, we can see that it's loaded that signal into, um, loaded that signal into the ARB. And then if I go in and I'm gonna connect up to wave gen one into channel one, I should be able to play back that ARB signal. So I'm gonna hit default setup, which does not clear my waveform generator, but that's gonna put it back in normal trigger mode and all that other fun stuff. Uh, and let's just do an auto scale. And if I auto scale, my ARB is on and it looks like I wanna turn off channel two move this down, zoom in, and my trigger level, of course, is at DC. So if I get a stable trigger on that, 
Um, another trigger I could use would be a zone trigger must intersect. And now I'm seeing that same signal, excuse me, seeing that same signal that I captured uh, from the tap, stored it into the ARB, play it back. So you could do that with a CAN bus also, if you have a CAN bus to capture. Um, you could add noise to see how your receiver handles extra noise in the system. You can also use the training signals that are now free, I think, with every scope. Uh, yes, they are free with every scope, and you can play a CAN bus in uh, to channels that way as well. So, uh, what else? Um, any other questions? Uh, does it support Korean? One of the things that the scope, all these scopes have in them, if we go back to the scope here, is in the help menu. Uh, oops, I long pressed help. Let me go back here. Help. Uh, I'm so used to using the 1000X, all the things pop up on the side. Um, you can actually go in and change your language to a number of these localized languages. Many of the help menus are translated locally and um, so Korean is here, Korean, boom, now all my menus are in Korean. You can get front panel overlays that label everything in whatever language you want. I'm gonna go back to English. So if you really wanna mess with your bench partner, you can go and hit help, change the language also. Uh, <laughs> we've done that to each other. What else? Um, any other questions? Yeah, we, zone trigger's awesome. We do like zone trigger. Uh, the 1000X is good for beginners. We got that question. We think that's probably the best scope we have available right now for beginners. The price point is, is pretty good for people. Uh, it has the training signals. So as you get started with a scope, you have access to a bunch of signals instead of going to try and find a source to, to learn how to use your scope. Um, there's a bunch of great stuff in there. Um, where to get the decodes? There should be... Um, Distributed websites and keysight.com should all have links. You can get those decode options post-purchase. Um, so if you have a scope and you want to add decodes to it, you should be able to do that from a distributor website. The license keys are the same if you buy it new or post-scope. Okay. Um, so it looks like that's about all we have for today. Um, anyone who gets any, la any last-minute questions in, now is your chance. Someone has an old Russian 5 megahertz scope. That is, that is a, uh, sounds awesome. I want to see a picture of that. So you can put that, send that to me on Twitter or something. Uh, five megahertz, wow, that's back in the day. Uh, so that's all we have for QA today. Um, thank you guys for tuning in. We'll see you tomorrow for a Scope Month video. So make sure you come back every day as part of Scope Month. We have a new video every weekday. We're giving away five more 1000X series scopes. We'll be live each Monday. Um, that's all we have. Uh, hi to my parents and to Neil, and I will see you guys later. Thanks for tuning in.